Okay, so we've got the mash water up to 70 degrees Celsius, and uh, so I've added two pounds of two-row malt, and uh, so now we're just going to stir that up a bit to make sure that we don't get any clumps. It's kind of sort of the texture of really runny uh, oatmeal, which kind of makes sense. It's a grain, not unlike oats. All right, I think we're good. So we're gonna put the lid on that, and we'll be back to that shortly uh, once it's had a chance to steam. Okay, so these have been cooking basically, uh, or at least sitting in hot water for an hour in total. Timer set for 50 minutes with no heat, and then uh, had the heat on for probably about five minutes or so, and then uh, turned it off because it was actually getting a bit hotter than I wanted because uh, you want the temperature for the grains for the last 10 minutes to be a little bit above 70 degrees, so about 75 Celsius or so. Um, so the idea is that, that uh, now we drain the grains through this, so it's basically a colander lined with cheesecloth. Um, if you've got a strainer that has smaller holes than my colander, then you could probably get away with that. Um, you might even be, I might even be able to get away without the cheesecloth, but I figured this may should contribute to a uh, slightly clearer beer. Uh, won't have as much floaties in it. Anyway, so I'm gonna drain the uh, grains and then uh, we're gonna start sparge. Okay, so I've got the grains into the colander. It's a good thing I uh, have a big one because uh, two pounds of grain uh, expands even more than I had expected. So luckily, I've got lots of uh, capacity in this thing. We're doing a larger batch of beer. This would obviously be far too small, but luckily, since I'm only doing one gallon, this is fine. So the idea is that you want to very slowly pour water over the grains, like so. And what you're doing is rinsing off the grains. The idea is that you want to get as much of the fermentable sugars out of the grains as possible. So this stuff is this water should be at or pretty close to your uh, your mash temperature, so around 70 degrees Celsius. Uh, I'm going to try and I'm probably not doing this terribly evenly. Uh, the pros use what's called a sparge arm, which is basically like a, a rotating spraying arm that goes back and forth and sprinkles water over it very slowly at just the right temperature, but obviously that's a little more high-tech than what I've got going on today. Now, once I'm done sparging, there's, um, there's a bit of debate online about whether or not to press your grains. Um, the recipe I have doesn't specify one way or the other. Um, some people say do it because you get more uh, wort out and also uh, you get the uh, extra bit of sugars. Um, other people say don't do it because you get excess tannins from the grains. Um, I'm not sure which is correct or if there is a correct answer. Uh, my thought is though that because I'm doing, my container is just over one gallon. And I'm already a little concerned about whether or not I'm going to have enough, uh, enough, or if I'm going to have too much war, rather. So I'm thinking what I might do is err on the side of caution and not press the grains uh, this time, and just sort of see how it comes out, and maybe try that uh, another time. Okay, so I've got the grains drained into this pot. It's the biggest pot I own, and it's eh, a little more than half full. So, uh, yeah, it's a good thing I'm only doing a gallon. Um, so I ended up having to take the colander out and hold it up for a bit to get the grains completely drained. And actually, I was holding it on a bit of an angle at one point. Uh, I guess sort of, I guess I kind of split the difference with the whole pressing the grains. Uh, I, the weight of them was probably pressing the bottom ones a little bit. But I, I didn't mechanically push it down, like I didn't use a spoon or anything like that. So uh, anyway, so now we just need to bring this to the boil. And then uh, we can start adding the hops. And in about uh, 
90 minutes from when the boil starts, we will have uh, a wort. While we've got the wort boiling away, of course it's uh, sort of my habit to uh, clean as I go when I cook, so I figure there's uh, no reason not to do that while I'm uh, making beer. Um, one of the things I was thinking about was all the spent grains that got left over from this. So um, there's a few different things that you can do with the grains. Um, so uh, and I mean, there's a lot of it. Um, so, anyways, I found a couple of recipes: one for uh, spent grain dog treats, and uh, one for uh, turning the spent grains into flour. So I've got. Mm, about six and a half cups worth of spent grains here on the cookie sheet and uh, I've got my oven I'm lucky my oven will go very low uh, on the warming setting uh, so I've got it set for 145 degrees uh, Fahrenheit um, I've also measured off uh, about four cups of spent grains for uh, dog treats now a word of warning uh, just generally but also specifically for um, uh, dog treats. If you put hops in your grains, um, or if, ho if hops have come into contact with the grains at all, do not use them for dogs. Do not let dogs have hops. They are poisonous. Very, very poisonous. Do not, do not give them hops. Um, so yeah, that's my uh, public safety announcement. Um, so yeah, so there's about four cups of, uh, of grains there. So as a result, instead of having that colander full either going into the compost or the garbage, I've now got this. Um, might even try composting the cheesecloth just to see what happens. Um, might cut it up first, but hey, what the hell. Okay, so this is what's happened after the 90 minute boil um, and hop, all the hop additions are done so at the end uh, once the water or once the wort was in the ice bath I uh, added another 16 grams of hops so that should uh, give me sort of the finish uh, the rest of the package of hops for the second ounce uh, go in later on as uh, dry hopping um, so I was uh, stirring it, although I'm not 100% sure, I can't remember if that was actually the wrong thing to do or not, but I know the, the general idea is you want to get the temperature down quickly, um, but I also know that you don't want to oxygenate your, you need to oxygenate your wort, but you also don't want to give it too much oxygen, um, so I don't know if I've gone a little too far the other way, but anyway, so that's pretty much it. Uh, so the next step is getting it into the carboy and uh, adding the yeast. So I've uh, rehydrated the yeast, which isn't actually following the instructions. It says to just add the dry yeast. But uh, I've always had better luck with uh, rehydrated yeast. Um, so I took about 125 mils or so of uh, boiled water that had cooled down to just above room temperature, added about a third of the package of yeast, which were down to about four grams, uh, and added it to the water just to sort of uh, wake it up. So uh, once the uh, wort is added to the carboy, then uh, the yeast will go in on top and uh, start to do its thing.